Hey everyone, welcome to my quick start guide on using Voltage Modular by Cherry Audio, which is a software modular synthesizer. Now, in case you're not already familiar with modular synthesizers, they traditionally come as a collection of hardware modules that you can wire together using patch cables, which gives you a crazy amount of power and flexibility in the sounds that you create. The big downside, however, is they take up a lot of room and they're very expensive, not to mention the tremendous mess of cables as you can see in these photos. Voltage Modular takes all that's great about modular synthesis and puts it into an inexpensive software package. I'm running Voltage Modular as a VST plugin in Mixcraft, but you can also run it in your recording software of choice. I also have a couple of sound visualization tools at the bottom here, just because it can be really cool and useful to see what the sound we create actually looks like. I'll explain more about these as we get into the tutorial. Modular synthesizers are great for breaking a sound down into its individual components and giving you full control over each element. Of course, before we start constructing a sound, it's helpful to know what those elements are. Let's take a real world example here. This guy. Yeah, you. He is a living, breathing tone production unit. If he sends air through his lungs, a tone is produced. Altering the amount of airflow causes the dynamics of the tone to change, making it louder or softer. Changes in voice box tension raise and lower the pitch. Lastly, the lips and mouth shape can be used to filter out or emphasize certain frequencies of the tone. Alright, let's do away with our human example and show how these same sonic parameters are controlled using a modular synth. First, let me give you a quick tour of the interface. You'll notice a lot of connection jacks at the top. We will be attaching virtual cables from these jacks to the modules we'll be adding. You can ignore this row of knobs for now, or hide it by clicking Perform. The available modules are shown on the left, and you can narrow them down by clicking on the category, or type to search. I'm going to search for a module that will serve as our voice box, which is called an oscillator. I'll just drag and drop this into the rack here. Next, we'll need something that can vary the note dynamics, kind of like the breath control in our human example. We'll bring in two modules for this purpose. An envelope generator, drag that in, and an amplifier. Think of these two as the air and the lungs. And of course, the oscillator is our voice, but ah! Ah, get that off of there. Let's just go with an icon. Oh my. Um, and uh, so where were we? Oh yes, breath supply, lungs, and we have our voice box and we will leave the lips out of it for now. I don't know if I should keep this analogy going the entire series. <laughs> anyway, these are the minimum modules needed to create a synth sound that you can play on your MIDI keyboard. Or if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, whatever method your recording software has to let you play notes through an instrument plugin. Modules can be connected to each other via these virtual cables. You can just click and drag to create one. And it can be disconnected by dragging one end to an empty area and releasing the mouse button. In order to hear the sound from a module, it must be connected to the main out. To hear the sound of the oscillator, we can connect a cable from any one of these waveform shapes to the main out. And since the oscillator is not stereo, we just connect it to the left or mono channel. Now, the problem with this is the sound constantly plays. So let me disconnect that. And then I'm gonna show you how to let the keyboard control the notes instead. So you can see at the top here, we have a section labeled CV outs. There is a plug here labeled pitch. And this is the pitch information from the notes you're playing on your MIDI keyboard. So if we connect that into the keyboard CV, now we can control the pitch of the oscillator using the keyboard. Of course, we still have the same problem that the note just keeps playing even when I've released the keys. This is where the envelope generator and amplifier come in. Looking back up at the CV outs, there's another one here labeled gate. This is a control voltage indicating when a note has been pressed or released on your keyboard. By connecting the gate to the gate in on the envelope, we will now be able to start and stop the notes with the piano keys 
kind of like starting and stopping the airflow in our human oscillator. The envelope provides dynamic control, just like our lungs allow us to sing louder or softer. It's going to give shape to the notes, but we'll need to connect it to our air supply, the amplifier, in order for it to have any effect. So we take the envelope out and connect it into the amplifier CV in, and then we take the desired waveform out of the oscillator and connect it to the amplifier input. Lastly, we'll take the output from the amplifier and send that to the main out so we can hear everything. Now we can both start and stop the oscillator sound and control the pitch with the keyboard. Yay, we have sound. We have a controllable sound. We have, perhaps if you've never done this before, your first modular synth. Now, I'll admit that this isn't the most interesting synth ever made, so let's explore some of the different sounds we can get out of the oscillator. The waveform that we're currently using is called a sine wave, and you can see from its icon that it has a very round shape. When I play this waveform, you can see the rounded shape in the oscilloscope here. Now, by reconnecting this cable to a different waveform port, we can see what these other waveforms look and sound like. This next one is the triangle wave, Next, we'll connect this to the sawtooth waveform. And as you can see, it looks like the edge of a saw blade. And it has a very bright sound as we've now introduced very sharp edges into the waveform. This next one is also a sawtooth wave, but with the slope going the other direction. They sound exactly the same. And then we have the square wave, also known as pulse wave. The square wave has a unique function where you can change the length of the high versus low points of the waveform, and you can hear a change in the tone as I change the pulse width. I can change it gradually, and it has kind of a cool effect. Very thin there at the top. That sounds pretty cool. Later on, I'll show you how to automate the wiggling of that knob. Now, this might not seem like a lot of different sounds, but there's an awful lot you can do to transform the sound and make it vastly different. One way to do this is through the envelope. I realize I kind of glanced over it before when we hooked everything up, but now let me show you how you can use it to shape the sound's dynamics. Let me just switch this back to a calmer wave, the sine. You can see these four sliders here, and each of these is a phase of the note as you press and hold it down. The four stages are called attack, decay, sustain, and release, which is what the A, D, S, and R stand for. The very first thing that happens when you press a note is the attack. If you want the note to start instantly, you leave the attack at zero. If you want the note to fade in, you raise it. Decay is the phase of the note after the attack is completed, and this is how long it takes for the note to fade down to the sustain level, which is the next phase. Now, if I raise up decay and play notes while sustain is at 100%, you're not going to hear anything because the sound has nowhere to decay to. But if I drag down the sustain a bit, you'll hear the note start loud, fade down, and then sustain at about 30% volume. If I take the sustain all the way to zero, then the sound fades completely out during the decay phase. And of course, you can make this longer or shorter as well. The last phase is release, and this is how long it takes for the sound to fade out after you let go of the note on your keyboard. Most acoustic instruments have the sound ringing out at least a little bit after the note is stopped. It never stops instantly. So having at least a little bit of release will help the notes to sound a bit more organic. We can actually recreate the shape of some of the notes of various instruments by playing around with different combinations of waveforms and envelope settings. For example, if we select a triangle waveform, give it full sustain, a moderately quick release, and a soft attack, we get a sound that's kind of like a recorder or flute.
if we keep that same envelope and switch the waveform to sawtooth, we get something that sounds a bit more like a violin. Now let's make the attack short, sustain at zero, and a long decay. And now it sounds a bit like a piano. If I switch this to sine wave and then make the decay shorter, I can get a very percussive sound, kind of like a drum. Let's try adding another oscillator. We'll go back to our module list here, search for oscillators. And you can see other oscillators on the modules list, but we're gonna stick with the basic oscillator for now. And we're gonna put this next to the first oscillator. Notice how the other modules move out of the way, so I can easily drop this in between the other oscillator and envelope generator. Just like the first oscillator, we're gonna connect this up to the keyboard pitch CV. Now, if I want to have a second cable coming out of the pitch CV, I just click on it and it expands out into several plugs. We'll pick this unused connector here and drag that to the keyboard CV on the new oscillator. So we can actually treat these two oscillators as a single voice box by connecting them into the same breath supply of the envelope generator and amplifier. So I will connect this sine wave into the amplifier input. And now when I play notes, both oscillators are sounding at the same time. The oscillators let you transpose the sound up or down by octaves using foot designations that actually come from the old pipe organ days. So 32 feet is an octave below 16 feet, which is an octave below eight feet, etc. That's the length of pipes they used to use and we still use that today. So to raise the octave of the second oscillator, we will set it to the eight foot stop. And now the waveforms won't phase cancel one another. And we can change the waveform on one, but not the other and get a cool combination sound. Let's try square. That's square and sine together. That sounds pretty cool. Let's try square and sawtooth together. Ooh, that sounds pretty awesome, actually. And of course, you can play around with all different combinations of octaves and waveforms. A very popular sound can be achieved by setting both oscillators to the same pitch and the same waveform, and then slightly detuning them from one another. So you can see this frequency knob here. This lets me change the pitch gradually rather than by octave. And if I drag this down a little bit, you can hear the oscillators get out of tune pretty quickly. If you know exactly how much you want to detune the oscillators from one another, you can edit the values manually by double clicking on the knob and then just typing in the value. So I'm gonna set this to five cents flat. So that would be minus 0.05. And this one I'm gonna to set to five cents sharp. And now you can hear that the oscillators are just out of tune with one another, creating a nice tangy sound. Now, let's add some lips. As I mentioned before, the shape of your lips and mouth filter out some of the sound frequencies, which is how we can form different vowel sounds, etc. The equivalent module for this is called a filter. Now, anytime you want to add a new module into the audio chain, you simply disconnect the current output from the main out and connect it to the input of the new module instead. Then, connect the output of the new module to the main output. However, just like the oscillator, the filter has more than one output, and each output corresponds to the type of filtering you want to do. This filter has three modes. The first mode filters out high frequencies and lets the low frequencies pass through, and we call this a low pass filter. The third mode is the opposite. It filters out the low sounds and lets the high sounds pass through, and of course we call this a high pass filter. The mode in the middle is actually a combination of the two. It only lets the middle sounds through. 
For now, we're just going to use the low pass filter, which is the most common. And we'll connect that to the main output here. And now when I play some notes, you're not really going to notice any difference. And that's because the cutoff knob here is set to its maximum value, which means all the sound is still getting through. If I turn this knob down while playing, you can hear more and more of the high frequencies getting filtered out of the sound. It becomes more mellow. Here's what this looks like in the Spectrum Analyzer. You can visibly see those high frequencies being filtered out of the sound as I turn the knob down. There is also a second knob on the filter called Resonance. This puts more emphasis on the cutoff frequency, causing a sharper sound. Looking again at the Spectrum Analyzer, you can see a bump in the sound right before it cuts off. Sweeping the cutoff knob back and forth with high resonance creates a really cool effect. Now, I could keep going with all of the variations provided with just these few modules, but this is where I would recommend that you go and if you don't already have Voltage, at least download the demo and play around with these modules. See how many different sounds that you can get. You might surprise yourself with the sheer variety that you discover. Once you've spent some time and gotten comfortable with these modules, come back for the second video where we will talk about the power of modulation, which is where you will really see some awesome sounds take shape. So this is the end of the tutorial, but I'm just going to play around for a minute or two here uh, with the settings and explore some sounds if you want to continue watching and see what I come up with. Otherwise, I will see you hopefully for the next video. Thanks for watching.